Transportation is a major contributor to CO2 emissions in the world. About 24% of all emissions came from this sector and over 75% of those are from road transportation with cars, trucks and motorbikes. That's why e-mobility is a pit stop on the road to decarbonization and we need multiple stakeholders to commit to clean energy and work together to reform the transportation sector. Today, my guest is Rafał Bajczuk, Senior Policy Analyst, Electric Vehicles Promotion Foundation. We will talk about the data, upcoming regulations and investments that are driving the change. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, I mean, e-mobility is on the tanks of many investors. And I think that when we, from whichever angle we will take a look on the Polish market, we can see that a lot of is happening around the topic. But maybe let's start with the assessing the current situation, where what we can learn from the data in Poland and EU. Electric vehicles are taking a larger, uh, ever larger share of the market uh, from year to year. Uh, unfortunately, Poland is not a front runner. We're actually one of the uh, on one of the last places in Europe when it comes to increasing the market share of new electric cars and vans. Even countries, the leaders? the leaders are the Scandinavian countries, Germany, the Netherlands, and and France. So the more affluent countries, but also countries that are more environmentally aware and aware of the need of transforming their energy systems and their automotive sectors. This is the case mm -hmm. of Germany. And it would be actually in our very interest to um, accelerate this pace of adopting electric cars uh, to Poland. But when looking at those countries that you mentioned that are like the front runners, what we can learn from them actually, what made them be in such a prominent position comparing to, for example, Poland? Yeah, so if you want to promote electric vehicles, you need to incentivize buyers, especially companies that are, because companies are those actors that are buying most new cars, you need mm -hmm. to incentivize them to buy electric cars. The best way to do it is through taxation, through taxes. Electric vehicles all over Europe enjoy tax cuts. The problem is that in, in the case of Poland, these tax cuts are very low because overall taxation for new vehicles is very low. Secondly, you need to make sure that charging infrastructure is there so that uh, future users, future customers have no uh, fears of um, of using these cars. Mm -hmm. um, what we're doing very well in Poland is um, adopting electric city buses into into our market. Electric buses already have over 50% of market share uh, of new buses. And our energy strategy is stating that by 2030 in all big cities, uh, larger than 100,000 people, all city buses should be battery electric. Very ambitious. Mm. Indeed. But uh, let's maybe come back to the passenger cars. So currently, what's the share of the electric vehicles uh, in Poland in terms of uh, electric cars? Well, in terms of uh, new registrations of new cars, the share of battery electric cars is two and a half percent. And this is way below the European average, which is around 20%, mm -hmm. and, and also way below the average for uh, our Central and Eastern European region, mm -hmm. which is something like 5%. So um, there is a lot of space for improvement. But do you think that this discussion, like let's say chicken and egg discussion about whether the infrastructure first or whether the electric car and the purchase of the car should go first? Uh, because that's very often an argument why people are not actually buying electric cars because there is no proper infrastructure. We know that we face some challenges in terms of the uh, residential areas, how to actually address this topic, you know, uh, individuals as well. So. Is it a, um, an argument? This used to be an argument, let's say, five or four years ago. Nowadays, the uh, basic charging infrastructure is available in Poland. We have only 30,000 registered electric battery electric cars in Poland versus 25 million traditional combustion engine cars. Without a bigger market share, there will be no incentive to invest into more charging stations. When it comes to residential charging, um, it is legally possible if somebody owns a parking place to install and somebody's own uh, low voltage charging station. Um, but also with new cars, nowadays electric cars have um, a range of circa 500 kilometers. Um, it, is, uh, uh, it is very well possible to just charge such a car every week on a fast charging stations. Um, it takes 20-30 minutes to charge charge up such a car and then you have a 500 kilometer range. And this is what an average person drives in 10 days. 
And also, as you mentioned, because we are also talking about the fleets, so 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 the business purposes also most of the offices uh, spaces in the garage they offer a kind of uh, infrastructure uh, also for the char char charging infrastructure yes yes since we're speaking about charging infrastructure in buildings this is actually something and charging infrastructure overall this is something that the european union is taking care of because this year new regulations will come in place that will regulate this issue and it will be mandatory for building owners and for um national governments to make sure that there is enough charging, publicly available charging infrastructure for cars. You mentioned regulations and of course incentives earlier. Now we know that we will have new regulations in terms on the European uh, European Union level, which will of course actually force big changes and speeding up the process of switching into the uh, mobility and electric cars. So can you tell us more about the regulations and what's the time frame mm -hmm. and also what type of impact it will have on the Polish market? The most important regulation is the AFIR, Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Regulation. Um, this regulation makes it mandatory for member states to ensure that on national roads there should be um, a charging spot uh, with fast chargers every 60 kilometers for passenger cars and every 120 kilometers trucks. And these targets must be met already by the end of 2025. By 2030, these targets will be increased. So the density of these charging stations will increase and the power output, there should be the charging infrastructure available. But I I am convinced that we will see a quick increase of registrations of, of new electric cars all over Europe because there are other regulations and there are actually um, voluntarily targets of car manufacturers who aim at drastically increasing the sales of battery electric cars. So this is on the European level. And do we have any incentives or any other regulations that actually are domestic regulations that will also help to make the change? Yes, since two years we have a purchase incentive in Poland. Uh, if a company uh, buys or leases a battery electric car, um, it, it can apply for a, a purchase subsidy of 27,000 Polish zloty. Uh, for private individuals, uh, this subsidy is either 18,700 or 20, 27,000 for uh, families uh, with three or more children. Cars are a part of the uh, urban ecosystem, so we are also having some announcements of the clean zones uh, in several cities. So if you could also uh, tell more about this and what's the phase, where are we, which cities are actually the forerunner in terms of uh, applying these uh, initiatives. This is the slow emission zones that we're talking about. This is a, a very good and very interesting development. We, over the past few years, all over Europe, we've seen an uptake of, of these low emission zones. Um, these zones are forbidding the most polluting cars from entering the cities. And the goal of these zones is to improve air quality and also incentivize uh, people to and, and companies um, to switch to electric uh, vehicles. Um, and so um, in Poland, um, there are three cities that are currently working on introducing these low emission zones. And um, these are Warsaw, Krakow and Wrocław. We are currently at a stage of discussing the proposals with stakeholders. So with citizens and companies of these cities, uh, these zones should be introduced um, in 2024 or 25. Uh, depending on uh, on the city. Uh, at first, the threshold will be very low, so only the oldest cars older than 20 years will be excluded, but these restrictions will be gradually increased. The reason for this is to, uh, to exclude the most polluting cars and to improve air quality. From our research, uh, we know that most of inhabitants and also most businesses in cities are supporting these measures. But when you are talking about the companies as the uh, partners in this discussion, do you mean also the businesses from the perspective that they own their fleet and they would switch to the fleet that uh, uh, is uh, in line with those requirements? As I mentioned, only the oldest cars will mm -hmm. be excluded. So and their approval, what does it mean that they are open and they are okay and they, yes, they are in uh, line with this uh, change? At least, at least with... Um, with the uh, the less stricter rules, we don't know yet how 
um, wh what the reaction will be when we're going to exclude, let's say, 10 year old uh, diesel uh, delivery vans. Uh, but we're actually seeing a trend, at least uh, with, uh, for example, delivery, package delivery companies who are themselves switching to uh, electric cars uh, and to new cars. Um, because it um, it is uh, a matter of improving their image and facing ESG criteria, which we of course obviously know that this exactly is like <laughs> exactly. So the the only group that uh, might have doubts are uh, the very small and medium sized companies who own one mm -hmm. or two uh, old cars. Um, but uh, we hope that we can either convince them or introduce uh, instruments that will mm -hmm. uh, help them transform mm -hmm. their the, the way of doing business and maybe purchase or lease uh, a, a cleaner vehicle. Okay, so now let's maybe switch the perspectives from the urban environment to more like logistics topics. Uh, you also mentioned trucks that of course the regulations that are coming into place will affect also the, the transportations and trucks. Poland is the biggest in terms of the uh, transportation sector, yes. So what does it mean for Poland, all those regulations in terms of how we are looking now on the development of the Poland becoming logistics hub? We already know that a lot of is happening on the western border. We assume that it will be also uh, speeding up on the eastern border due to the fact that after the war is finished, Ukraine will join European Union. So. What does it all mean for us? We have uh, the same kind of regulation for trucks over three and a half tons. So the uh, the, the biggest uh, trucks, also tractor trailers, will become uh, battery electric. And this, this situation is very interesting. Um, the market is very different from passenger cars because um, the decision to buy a certain passenger car is uh, always to some degree a, an emotional decision mm -hmm. whereas uh, buying a truck this is uh, a, a business decision so a truck must pay for itself mm -hmm. and the situation for battery electric trucks is that that battery electric trucks are way cheaper to operate because they have bigger annual mileages a an average truck drives um, on average 120 130 thousand kilometers and the prices for diesel that these operators are paying right now are huge. Um, and so uh, battery electric trucks will, will change the situation. Um, the European Commission proposed uh, a new regulation in February and the current targets are to decrease emissions from new trucks by 90% until 2040. This is where it's becoming crucial for Poland because Poland is the biggest market for new tractor trailers and we have over one third of international trucking operations in the European Union, uh, which means that uh, our country will have to switch the fastest to battery electric car in order to stay competitive. It creates huge business opportunities and also big opportunities for our growing e-mobility sector. Mm -hmm. Poland is already the largest producer of uh, batteries for cars and trucks in Europe. Uh, we also have uh, also Polish companies that are manufacturing uh, DC, so uh, high volume charging stations for buses and trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and all this poses a very big development and business opportunities for our country. So we could say that actually from the bigger picture, actually the financials are the main uh, challenge at this stage, yeah, because you don't see the problem in terms of the production sector to answer the demands that will come because of the regulations and because mm -hmm. of the time frame. It's more about being able to finance all those investments. Yes, the supply of the trucks is secured. Mm -hmm. um, Truck manufacturers have quite ambitious targets. Um, manufacturers like Volvo, Daimler, Scania um, say that they want to sell at least 50% of new trucks uh, as uh, zero emission trucks, so either battery, electric or hydrogen. By the way, hydrogen is also included in this AFI regulation. So mm -hmm. there is also going to be a minimum density of hydrogen charging stations. Um, these hydrogen charging stations are not meant to be used by passenger cars because in, in this sector it does make sense. But in some use cases that there will be an opportunity for... It does make sense. Trucks. So it's like the end of the discussion which we had recently that, you know, maybe 
hydrogen, maybe M mobility, new mobility. So you don't see hear these discussions anymore in terms of the passenger cars. Yes. Well, so far it is true because uh, the car manufacturers themselves decided this and the market in a way. So we have a big supply uh, of uh, and and a big variety of battery electric models. Uh, there are already something like 200 battery electric. Uh, cars, passenger cars available mm -hmm. in Europe. Um, as for hydrogen cars, there are only a few and there is no country in, in the EU that has a functioning network of hydrogen stations. And these cars are simply not practical. Uh, so they are more expensive, have less storage space, uh, more expensive to purchase, more expensive to run, and they don't offer uh, the same amount of comfort uh, on everyday use. So now, but now quickly, because still we have this hydrogen in the game. So in which transportation, which means of transportation you would see the hydrogen? Hydrogen as a transportation fuel will be uh, used in applications like uh, railways, uh, shipping uh, and aviation, either directly as hydrogen or uh, in, in the form of an e-fuel like uh, the, like sustainable aviation fuels, we call them so uh, E kerosene um, or ammonia uh, for, mm -hmm. for shipping. Okay. Um, so it, it, in one way or another, we are going to use a lot of hydrogen. And of course, hydrogen is going to be a huge uh, fuel and feedstock for the chemical industry and, and other industries like the steel industry. So it's good that we're talking about uh, producing more and more green hydrogen, which means hydrogen that uh, derives from renewable energy sources. And there is going to be plenty of applications for this hydrogen. Uh, and uh, we think that cars are just not the best, passenger cars and trucks are not the best way to use hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Well, OK, so taking Con under consideration all of this that you said, regulations, incentives, uh, different types of programs. Uh, are you optimistic? Where will be with uh, in terms of ap uh, applying a mobility in Poland in five years? Well, I cannot say that I'm optimistic because uh, Poland is uh, so far a laggard when it comes to immobility. And our politicians from the ruling parties, but also from the opposition, are not very eager to incentivize the sector so that uh, we, we become a champion in immobility. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but I mean, if the politicians won't do anything, then the market will decide for for us and we will be just one of the uh, last countries in Europe to fully adopt e-mobility in the late 2030s. Uh, but but I hope that uh, at least uh, after the next uh, elections that is uh, planned for autumn this year, we will see some acceleration in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in this area and we will have a, a an increase uh, of, of uh, new battery electric cars. So we can summarize that we will see the change. The question is only who will be the driver of the chain, business, governments or people, consumers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rafał. Thank you.